a very warm welcome to another lecture on in this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. Uh, we have till now covered the simulation of various constellations for digital communications and we have covered the ideas of coherent and non coherent detection. However, if we talk about uh, simple communication systems or uh, what is covered in a digital communications course, this is slightly more than half of the course because the other half talks about inter symbol interference and equalization. Whereas, a course on wireless communications or modern 3G and 4G wireless communications or 5G, 6G because we are uh, currently implementing 5G when these lectures are being recorded and uh, have actively started working towards 6G. So, 5G and 6G wireless communications would include wireless channel models, fading and related topics. So, naturally the original plan for this course was to cover all of this within this course only, but uh, the problem is that uh, I had not anticipated that uh, we will have to go at a slower pace or the eventual pace of this course turned out to be much slower than I had anticipated at the start of this course. So, we are reaching the end of this course, maybe uh, we have uh, another couple of hours left for uh, recording or another couple of hours worth of videos left. Whereas, uh, all the topics stated above are still yet to be covered. So, what I will do in the remainder of this course is we will introduce the wireless communications and the wireless channel models. We will look at basic simulation examples for wireless channel models. Look at basic simulation examples for wireless channel models such as the Rayleigh fading channel. And via these Rayleigh fading channels, we will introduce the ideas behind uh, inter symbol interference and equalization. I do not know whether we will have enough time to actually simulate uh, inter symbol interference and equalization, but uh, we will definitely introduce uh, inter symbol interference and equalization. And following this, hopefully, we will be able to conceive another course on modeling and uh, simulation of wireless communication systems which will cover all these topics including inter symbol interference and uh, fading channels and possibly coding because coding is another aspect of modern communication systems that uh, we have till now totally ignored and uh, it forms the very backbone of uh, all the communication systems. So, error control coding. So, these are the error control coding, inter symbol interference, wireless channel models and obviously decoding. So, all of this is delegated to a separate course. Originally, we had planned this and much more in this course as you can see in the syllabus, but uh, due to time constraints, we will introduce fading 
and wireless channel models in this course and maybe talk about inter symbol interference and then end this course. So, that said let us talk about wireless communication. So, wireline communications are modeled using modeled well using AWGN or additive white Gaussian noise channels because in wireline communications there is a transmitter and uh, there is a receiver the transmitter and there is a receiver and you sorry in wire and there is a wireline link between the two and going from one to the other is a simple or uh, you have a deterministic channel mostly a deterministic channel between the two and uh, you can find out uh, what is the channel and you can reduce it to an AWGN channel mostly this is the case. But in case of a wireless communication system there are two forms of wireless communication or mostly talk about in wireless systems there are two forms of wireless channels. So, we have to appreciate one thing the signal is electromagnetic waves the signal is modulated over electromagnetic waves and transmitted and those EM waves propagate over the free space and detected by a receive antenna and detected by a receive antenna that feeds them to the processing unit for signal detection fine this is uh, what is there. Now wireless communication systems you can see wireless communication systems. talk to other over EM waves this is the first point and going back to Maxwell's interpretation or uh, going back to what Maxwell has postulated I believe all of you have uh, done courses on electromagnetic propagation are we know that that waves are like light or electromagnetic waves behave like light. You can say that uh, electromagnetic waves are light yes that is true, but light at lower wave. electromagnetic waves behaves like light at lower wavelength. What is the consequence of this lower wavelength? We will come to that. So, the first thing is, so then we have a couple of questions. How do, so the question we communicate using light. 
So, in order to get an intuitive feeling of how do we communicate using light, think of uh, a simple means. Uh, you might have seen this in movies or uh, you might have seen this that uh, take a, a simple way is that you take light and have light and you turn the light source on and off repeatedly and someone will notice you right so consider that you are in a movie you have been kidnapped by the bad guys and they have put you in a room and there is a light switch you turn the light switch on and off and on and off and someone will notice and come and rescue you. That is how movie logic works. If it is a spy movie from the 70s, then uh, you would uh, talk to them in Morse code. So, if it is a spy movie from the 70s, then you would switch the light on and off in Morse code and in doing that, that you will convey important information like the name of the boss, the hideout, the license plate number of all the cars involved, etc. You can uh, Morse code in movies could uh, carry infinite amount of information, but uh, that is not true anyway. So, now just this is an example, example of human perception of communication via light. Right? This is an example of human communication, human perception of communication via light that this is doable. This is just a proof of concept, this is do doable. Now, this is done via, so let me this, do this on the previous slide only. This is done by switching the mostly a bulb on and off every second or so. Fine, it's done every second or so. You you would be comfortable, or maybe you switch it on and off twice a second, something like that. But now, in order to digital communications. Think of RF circuits that can switch on off several thousand times per second and therefore, both the transmission and detection of these signals can be very high. So, the transmission and detection of these signals can be done at very high rates because we are transmitting using electromagnetic waves and you have an idea of how that works. Let us now talk about the wireless channel. So, the channel as we have established source 
sink a uh, channel connects the source into sink and free space so we have a free space channel that can be either a line of sight channel or a non line of sight channel sight non sight so in a line of sight channel here the transmitter and the receiver are able to see each other the transmitter and the receiver are able to see each other and they lie within each other's line of sight that's a line of sight channel in a non line of sight channel there's no so like you are in front of a bulb you can see the bulb so there is a direct line of sight between the bulb and you you see the sun you uh, don't look at the sun please you see the sun and there is a line of sight between you and the sun so there is a line of sight or there is a direct link between the transmitter and the receiver that's called the line of sight channel but this is mostly not possible so now we'll come to your cell phones as an example so consider your cell phone and uh, mostly since we have said that uh, uh, electromagnetic waves that uh, act as carriers of uh, information for uh, your cell phones or any other data or even your fm radio all of these are non line of sight channels or there is the transmitter transmitter and the receiver do not see each other these links are naturally weaker in older cities you might have seen uh, television transmitter towers or transmitter towers for both radio as well as television were uh, put on hill tops so that uh, you could get a better view of things or uh, multiple people could look upon them so because of this line of sight that uh, line of sight channels are always better than non line of sight channels so how does a non line of sight channel work so the simplest example of a non line of sight channel or simplest example of a non line of sight channel is the moon. the moon is a non line of sight channel between the sun and the earth so non line of sight channels the sun is the source the moon is a reflector and the earth is the receiver or you are the receiver if you want to call it that so the moon in non line of sight channels the propagation of electromagnetic waves occurs via different physical phenomena namely reflection refraction and scattering so even if within a room you don't see the sun you still feel the sunlight because the sunlight is reflected from multiple sources now this reflection refraction and scattering is important or uh, actually diffraction is also a important part diffraction diffraction is also so why is diffraction important all of us know diffraction so diffraction if i go back it is the bending of light waves 
when they encounter an obstacle that is of the order that is of the order of their wavelength right this is direction when they encounter an obstacle that is of the order of their wavelength now that said what do we mean that uh, so for visible light diffraction is rarely observed because wavelength of visible light is a few hundred nanometers at most visible light the wavelength is of the order of a few hundred nanometers at most so the phenomena of diffraction is rarely observed but for communication signals signals we operate at frequencies almost up to 6 gigahertz maximum frequency that we deploy for non line of sight communications is up to 6 gigahertz 6 gigahertz means fc 6 gigahertz means wavelength is 5 cm so maximum frequency of 6 gigahertz means that uh, the underlying wavelength is 5 cm and uh, you would find multiple objects that are of the order of 5 cm around you so 5 to 10 cm something like that so this is all invisible communication microwaves they lie with much below the visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum and these radio waves and microwaves these uh, operate at a uh, wavelength of 5 uh, cm 10 cm things like that or they get scattered more they get refracted more and uh, they are uh, more likely to be found where you cannot find visible light uh, after reflection and scattering so this is the operating me mechanism for non line of sight channel so these i would uh, put it this way that uh, these sources due to their larger wavelengths see richer scattering we see richer scattering environments as compared to visible light and hence are uh, better suited for wireless communication or better suited for non line of sight channels because they see rich scattering so now we'll come to the idea of fading that this is the transmitter this is the receiver and in order to explain fading let's consider this example there's a transmitter there's a receiver and we transmit a pulse from the transmitter to the receiver so we transmit a pulse so these crosses just say scatterer or a reflector this cross represents a scatterer or reflector so i transmit something i assume that assume though you can see that uh, in the representation they are just opposite to each other but i assume that there exists no direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver that said we get uh, we transmit this and 
we transmit an impulse here say st is transmitted from here and after getting multiplied or after propagating through this channel we see that uh, this t the time which we receive the signal and tau 1 is the lag. So, because naturally there will be lag or tau i tau 1 to tau n this will be the propagation delay due to the ith scatterer and h i is the channel coefficient with which the ith scatterer will multiply. So, please note that the ith scatterer can be any random thing, it is not a reflector. So, the ith scatterer will have its own reflection properties, it will have its own transmission properties and it will introduce a delay plus it will depend on the size mainly electromagnetic propagation. So, will not go into the details, but uh, h1 you can say is kind of h1 encompasses the propagation loss from the source to the scatterer and from the source and from the scatterer to the receiver plus it encompasses the reflection coefficient of the scatterer. So, h1 best treated as a random number or something random. Similarly, h2 will in the second scatterer will introduce a lag tau 2 and will have a coefficient h2, h3 and h4. So, now based on all these we will receive in the absence of noise, we will receive the signal write it here slightly problematic y t for just these four scatterers or will be summation over k h k tau k s this beast. So, this is what I will receive multiple copies of the same signal multiplied and delayed by different constants based on the scatterers and all of these will be random things. So, this phenomenon of receiving multiple copies of the same signal delayed and uh, scaled by different coefficients is known as fading. How do we deal with this will be the topic of the next lecture and uh, this is a preview of what is coming in the next lecture. We will uh, talk about this later. Thank you. Mm -hmm.